thank God for all of the holy ministers of God and all of the holy people of God that have come together to worship God with us tonight. We're going to ask you, if you will, if you turn to the Gospels. And there we have a scripture in Matthew. <laughs> And we want you to look at Matthew with us, 21. And you'll see it in the other Gospels too when you get a chance to compile them in your own private study. And it'll be the Gospel according to St. Mark and John. In Mark it would be chapter 11 verses 15 through 9. In John it would be chapter 2, 13 through 17. But we're in Matthew tonight in 21 starting with verse number 12. And we want you to read this and we want you to read it with the love of God and with the understanding of God, alright? Come on, let's read verses 12 through and we'll just stop you. Let's just start at 12 and let's read it. If you have it, say amen. amen. Come on, wake up a little bit better than that. Come on, say amen. amen. God bless you. Share your Bible. Look over. Take the time to look across from you. Share your Bible. And let's read it together. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them it is written my house shall be called a house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves and the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them and when the chief priests, scribes, saw the wonderful things he did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased and said unto him, Hearest thou what they say? And Jesus said unto them, Yes, have ye never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings? Thou hast perfected praise. And he left them and went out of the city into Bethany and he lodged there. We would like for you to look again at verse number 12. And Jesus went into the temple of God. Can we say man? Can we say man again? If you'll just, just share that thought with yourself, just say, and Jesus went in. Come on, say it again. And Jesus went in into the temple into the temple here tonight God is sharing something with us we've, we've talked about the obedience of God how God has spoken to our hearts that way and then on last night Lord of Lords crown him Lord of Lords and on tonight he speaks to us about Jesus himself going into the temple into a place where it has been categorized to a place where it was religiously a place where all of the Jews went in to worship. But before we go to the temple tonight, we would like to impress upon your mind some of the things that have come to maybe our knowledge in our own realms of religiosity in the decade of the 80s here in the continent of America. There are some things that are happening that are concerns to us in the spirit now because they're God's concerns but have you ever noticed how sometimes we may even come into our own temples and uh, we're speaking about this brick and mortar and uh, how we ought to reverence the house of God the house of God is not to be eerily reverenced or it is not to be narrowly looked upon but it is the house of God now we understand the scriptures in twofold meaning because the Bible says that God would put his name in the place by which you should bring your tithe and your offering and thereby which you should worship. The old covenant tells us about it through the eyes of Deuteronomy. It speaks again about it in the book of Numbers. It talks about it again in the Chronicles. It talks about it again in Leviticus. How that where God would choose out a place for Israel, for the people of God, 
where he would set his name and there and there only were they to worship, to bring their tithes and to bring their offerings and to bring their worship unto God. After they had traveled sometimes through the desert and through the wilderness, then God found them a place that they traveled through Canaan. By this time they had taken away the temple of cloth and the temple of hair and the temple of weavings and had come to a temple of brick and mortar. But you notice in the day and age how sometimes we can become very irreverent of our own temples. How we can walk in the house of God any kind of way and do any kind of thing on this holy ground. But we must always remember it's a sanctified house and God has placed his name here and sanctified it with his presence. So we too must reverence the house of God. Some houses may not look as well and not as beautiful as some, but because God has seen fit to place himself there and by there calling men out of darkness into the marvelous light and washing sins away and teaching them how to observe all things and causing them to become students and making unto him disciples, students of the word every precept and ordinance of God because God has placed his spirit there and brought himself a man of God there to oversee the things of God placed a shepherd there to lead the flock of God even until the Lord our God shall return again because he has seen fit to do this and ordained the house because it is brick or mortar or because it is a frame or because it is not it is not gaiety or beauty or have any desiring qualities of itself still because the preciousness of God is there God sanctifies the house and the house becomes holy and because we can see that there's power not because of just its mere brick and mortar but because of who resides there you can hear how Paul in many of the scriptures you declare saluting one who has the church in his house calls out even how he talks about Aquila and Priscilla saluting all of the saints in that house and going on and saluting all the saints in other houses and it gives a request saying I'm the saints from Babylon and the saints from Caesar's house and the saints of the palace salute you also but it's because that God has saw fit to ordain the house with his presence, then thereby we ought to reverence the house of God because of the holy presence of God. We've gotten away from the place of calling God's house holy. I remember how the old saints used to quicken when they came in the door. God's house had gone through a week of hard work and trying and temptation at home. Trouble on the job, trouble in the neighborhood. But would step on holy ground and go speaking in tongues. God's house. A place where God resided. It was like a sanctuary. A place where people received their healing and deliverance. It was because fear was in the community of the saints. The community of the believers had fear of God as they approached the house of God because they believed that God was in the house. And as long as there is faith that God is in the house, God will move and, and God will heal and God will deliver in his house. There used to be power in God's house. Such a power until folk didn't joke and jest in God's house. Oh no child, you couldn't get a child to run and ripping up and down the aisles. And you couldn't get a child to sit down in these holy seats. And you couldn't get a politician behind this holy pulpit. Child, because it was God's house. I know it's been a long time. It's taken you some time to go back and remember how holy we used to reverence God's house. You didn't do everything you wanted to do in God's house. You didn't pass notes. You, you didn't chew gum. You didn't give your babies cookies and crackers. 
No, because it was God's house. God was in the house and God was looking. And folk used to sit on the front row and had power with God. Oh, Jesus. They came in with a praying spirit. They came in looking for God to work wonders and miracles. If there were any sick among us, yes, they were healed. And they were delivered and they were set free. Why? Because there was a spirit of reverence in God's house. When they stepped on the ground, they caused themselves in an orderly fashion. They made sure they were dressed properly. They made sure they talked properly. They made sure they handled themselves and behaved themselves likewise. Because they feared, because they were in the presence of God. Another thing that they did was they didn't get into the service until they had prayed. They didn't just jump on the choir and start singing. They didn't jump on the organ and on the piano and the every various instrument until they had prayed. When they came in God's house, they recognized him and came to the altar and start praying. And when they prayed through, then they got in their positions and were ready to praise God. No wonder a Shekinah and a Spirit of God anointed the services so heavenly. No wonder they could shout by the power of God and know that everything was going to be all right. They didn't commit suicide. They didn't have nervous breakdowns. They were not fearful. They were not concerned about things that were going on so much in the world. All they were concerned about, am I living holy? Am I walking upright? Is my life pleasing you? It was God's house. They wanted to please God. God was the center of attention, the center of attraction. God's word was holy. Everybody stood still and with their hearts attentive, their minds spurred because they wanted to hear what thus saith the Lord. Therefore, because God's house was holy, God's man was holy. They feared the man of God. They reverenced him. Nobody talked back to God's man. If they did, we know that they didn't live long. It was power in God's house. I've seen them try to stop him and fall dead. I've heard about how they tried to hit him and drop dead. I've heard how they struck at him and drop dead. It was power in the house of God. Because that's God's man. You don't rouse him. You don't come up against him. You don't talk evil about him. You watch your mouth. Watch what you say and listen and do what thou saith the Lord. It was God's house. But the immorality and the decadence of our society has taken an experience on the house of God. Have you noticed about Nixon's regime? How we found so much immorality in high seats, we feel like it is also so in God's house. When the president fell, which was the highest office in this United States of America, he was not the only one that fell. He was set up so high and set up so high in, in character and morals and precepts and the outlining laws of the circumference of this country. Judicially he had the highest seat. Legalistically he had the highest seat. He was the man that engineered the ways and the phantom and out of this country. By him everything had its precedence and its order because he was the highest seat in this country. But when the man on the high seat was exposed and he fell, not only Nixon fell, but the order of other systems began to fall. Uh -huh. I would have never expected the failure of reverence would hit God's house. I would have never expected it, neither probably would you have. That because this man in high office, nationally and socialistically and in the secular world, would have such an evading impact on the house of God. Because he failed, then others start looking for water gates in the church system. Start looking behind closed doors and under sheets and back rooms. All of a sudden, men who would have rebellion in their heart anyway, women who had tongues that wanted to lash out anyway, began to lash out on God's house and God's people and God's leaders began to fall in the eyes of the people. But that still does not change the motive that is still God's house. You may not have respect for God's leaders, but as long as God has ordained them, honey, touch not God's anointed and do his man no harm. 
doesn't matter for the order of the day that we should be. We should follow after the customs of the seed of this world, but the world ought to be following after us. We should not govern ourselves in the outlining formulas of what the world has to offer. But rather, it should be that the world is looking out to live through us. We should never be dictated down to. We should never be looked down to. But we should be looked up to on how to live, how to talk, how to walk, how to treat our families, how to live with our husband, how to treat our wives, how to treat our children. But things have changed. God's house looking at the world and wondering, now will they do it this way in the world? Never. Has that been an outline of precedence for the ruling order of God's house? God's house has its manuscript, has its bylaws, has its precepts, has its dialogue, has its business, and has already set it in order. The Holy Ghost has already been the secretary. It's already been scribed down from Genesis to Revelations. If you get lost on what to do, look in the book. It's God's house. No mixing, neither does the Senate, neither does the legislator have any kind of business coming in God's house to rule. Well, to stop from my soapbox stands because I think that God's house is the precedence of the order of this day. If God's house is held in high esteem, esteem and reverence, then it would set our society in order. It is not to be the last one sought out on the line, but it is to be held up in the community as a place of reverence and power. They ought to be able to look in the community and say, if there's anything that I really want to do and I really want to get my life together, there's a house over there. God lives in that house. I can get my life together over there. There's a community of believers. I've seen how they walk. I've seen how they talk. I've seen how they live and watch, honey. God is alive. It should never be the last shot out on the list. But held in high esteem and reverence and preference. High above and exalted above every other lifestyle of living. That's why it's important how you reverence God's house. You don't let people come in here and do whatever they want to. Because it's God's house. You don't let in and everything step behind the sacred desk. Because it's God's house. You don't let anything just sit down on the instruments because it's God's house. Nothing and everything don't get on the choir because it's God's house. Not anything just ushers in at the door is God's house. Not anything is a deacon or a, 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 a trustee or any kind of position because it's God's house. And God's house is a holy house. It's a holy house. Too many times we have elevated people. Their lives were not subject to reverence nor to the moral fiber of God's house. It's caused others to point the finger and say, if they had not, then I would not. And it's made examples and it's made shipwreck in the house of God. And for that reason, we can see why it seems that the prophets had written before Jesus appears on the scene. And that the zeal of God's house had eaten him up. You got to be zealous in this laid back day where everybody's trying to be sedity and bourgeois. You got to find somebody that's got a spirit of prayer and a, a love for God's house that's not afraid to worship and praise and magnify God. You got so many sedity saints now, so bourgeois, sedating, laid back and in the confines of God's house. And I don't have anything wrong with you doing things in, in the right order. And I don't have a thing wrong with education, but I don't think education ought to dictate your worship. And I don't think your job ought to dictate your style. I think you ought to still be able to say, Hallelujah! Yes, sir! Hallelujah! We done got so sedity and 
500 and, and silk has done something to us and leather has reached our brain and pleather has reached our minds and, and just because we can go to Saks Fifth Avenue it has reached our bloodstream and has caused an illness and a sickness in God's house and Master Charge and Visa has turned our minds around until we can change to the point where we don't even know how to praise God anymore we lose beat and lose time in God's house never there was a time or a day and age when you'd get these kind of folks together we'd get together without music and without pianos and, and without drums honey but there's one thing we always had we had a good beat we didn't lose time cause our foot and our hands clapped together but Master Charge has taken the beat and Visa has taken the hallelujah and silk and furs and all time it's a strange world we live in. Folks wearing rabbit and think they got on mink stoles and, and have forgotten how to praise God. And folks wearing fox and think because they got a little fox flung around their neck that they don't know how to shout the praise of God. And, and got a little piece of house on the side of a raggedy hill and think that they don't know how to praise God. It's a strange thing. What's going on in God? I know this is different, but it's a sadity spirit. You think sadityness comes from God, but it comes from the world, baby. Sadityness and bourgeoisie doesn't come from God. That old sadity spirit that makes you too fine and too glorious to give God the praise. That's a spirit of the devil. That's a wicked, unclean, ungodly spirit. Oh, yes, it is. You ought to be able to wear your rock and be able to wear that ice on your finger and your diamonds and your emeralds aren't get in your way. Your rubies shouldn't get in your way. Your Louis Vuitton, your Poochie and Gucci shouldn't get in your way. You ought to be able to say, thank you, Lord, and still praise it. Yes, God's house. When things start getting in your way of praising God, uh, this takes time, then you ought to set them things aside uh, and tell God, you can't trust me yet, Lord. Uh, take it and hold it a little bit longer. Uh, put it in the safe for me. Uh, I'll be back to pick it up later on. Uh, when I feel like things have gotten me to the place that I can't shop, baby, uh, I don't want that kind of thing. Uh, I want to be able to praise Him. Uh, spirit. We ain't never had a sanctified church that was funny. Got a funny old spirit now. All because God has blessed us. Getting funny on God. Laid back and so educated. And just God has blessed us with our education and now we become so what the world calls refined. God doesn't call it refined. No. Because he didn't care how much he gave Dan and Benjamin and Asher and Manasseh and Ephraim. He expected them to come in praising him. He didn't care how much land he gave Judah and Asher and Naphtali. He expected them to bust through those gates praising him. He didn't care how much land and property he gave them and how many houses and cattle he gave them. He expected them to praise him. But we need a Job spirit. We need to understand it doesn't matter how much God gave you. He can give it and he can take it away. So I better learn how to praise him. Praise him when you were broken. When your light bill was due. You knew how to praise him. You knew how to praise him even though the rent was due. And some of us would take part of the rent and give it to God. And if the church was in trouble, we'd take the extra that we had. And gave it to the house of God because we loved God's house. We didn't want to see anybody hungry. Nobody down and out. There was a buddy system. It was like you my brother and you my sister. Uh, and we're all in the family together uh, but now we done got sedity uh, 
and booze you all. And there's only a certain clique that can be my family. And only a certain group that can be my family. But it's a funny spirit that has crept into the temple of God. Where well, you got to be on this level before I can speak to you. Well, you know I've got my masters now. And I've got my DD now. And I'm this and I'm that now. I've got my roles in the drive. And I've got my lecturer 225. I'm going out to get my Ferrari. Well, honey, listen. These things are good and not to be despised. But it should not change your attitude towards the house of God. This place has to be the center of your love. The center of your reverence. The center of your attention. Why? Because it was this house and the gospel that came out of this house and the gospel that came to this man of God that saved you. That you came to know Jesus. You came to understand repentance and what the power of sin had done and what the grace of God had ministered. It was through the men and women of God that you learn your way how to get entreated unto God how to be reconciled to the spirit of God the love of God's house ought to be your intermost zeal anything I can do for God there ought to be a father for your moral life you ought to want to not be an immoral person but you want to live a clean life you ought to want to desire a, a pure life and a pure mind and a clean hope on God. You ought to be convicted in your spirit when you sin. You ought to want to confess. Because to live without you, Lord, is to live a life of hell. Is to live a life of distress. You ought to want to live clean so that you can represent Jesus. And if you stumble, get up and confess. Turn your back on it and forsake it. And say, for God I'll live. And for God I'll die. But the zeal for God's house is different. People rather have things or positions and titles. Instead of have the zeal for God's house. The cleansing of God's house. The motivation for God's house. The praying in God's house. It's very hard to get a saint to pray today. You're afraid to witness. Afraid to call somebody. Afraid to win somebody. Afraid to walk across the street. And knock on the door and say, I'm your new neighbor. I go to the church around the corner. I want to invite your children to Sunday school. I'll take them. I'll bring them home. I'll watch out for them. What time you want me to pick them up? We're afraid. There's no zeal, no real love. Eating us up, no. We're too cute. We cross our legs in God's house. Fold our arms in God's house. We're too groovy to clap our hands. Too beautiful with your new do. You don't want to sweat it out. You don't want to get the crinkles. Your suit costs $500 and you don't want to put no salt in it. Well, honey, God needs to take you back and tell you it's better to praise me than go to head on a flowery bed of ease. You're on your way to hell in a finery. You're on the way to hell in a 450 SEL. You just don't recognize that your zeal and love for God has grown cold, real cold. But this place used to be a house of power fire. God could walk in any time and the saints would say, you welcome. Have your way, Lord. It doesn't matter what time it is. Just have your way. Don't matter what I look like when I leave here. Have your way with me, Lord. Hey, but the zeal is all gone. We want to come in permanent press and go out not drip dry. We want to go out huge like I just left the cabaret. We want to stroll in and stroll out. We used to shout in and roll out. Yes, 
the zeal in God's house. Folk used to come in blind, in the coma, sick, full of disease. And God would walk in and visit his house. Stand up until it looked like uh, smoke was in the room. Uh, we used to think it was the bad carpet uh, and the bad dusty floorboards. Uh, we used to didn't even know there was a word Shekinah. Uh, we used to say Holy Ghost. Uh, we didn't say Holy Spirit. Uh, we just said Holy Ghost. Uh, I got the Holy Ghost. Uh, it was the zeal in God's house. Uh, we used to love them old mothers of Zion. Uh, them old fathers of Zion they had power with God they used to just pray it wasn't a long prayer but you knew they had familiarity with God they used to start out sometime with their own name Father this is Emma I lay hands on this daughter in the name of Jesus and power would run through your body you didn't worry about being sick you were scared to stay at home sick you wanted to get to the house you didn't make excuses you ran the church you didn't say I had to get up in the morning we made no excuse for staying at home them old mothers wouldn't let us them old fathers of the gospel wouldn't let us they say ain't no excuse child come on to church and praise God we say I'm sick though come on and he'll heal ya but I'm in trouble come on he'll deliver ya I'm depressed come on and he'll pick you up I'll be by there in 20 minutes be ready but I don't have the dress wear what you got child but come on to the house of God ah! love God's house. We loved it. It was shabby, but we loved it. It wasn't the best, but we loved it. And our new buildings don't mean anything. We just praise him for the beautifying of the temple. But it should never change our attitude and our expectation for God. You didn't have to pump us when we come to praising God. You always had to cut us off and shut us up and sit us down. You had to slow us down. You didn't get wary with the young folk because they couldn't shut us up. We were shout all over everything. Sometimes when we first learned how to shout, we knocked over everything. And the mothers would try to help us. And they'd whisper in our ears, stay on your feet, child. Praise him, but stay on your feet, child. Praise him, but stay on your feet. They taught us how to dance in the spirit. Dance before the Lord, but dance with a holy life. Don't get on that floor living all crazy. Sit down until you learn how to live right. Sit down until you learn how to confess. Sit down until you learn how to obey God. The zeal and the fear of God. We seen God do things in those days we could never see and never witness before. We watch God raise the dead. We watch God open up deaf ears. We watch the men and women of God. Oh, praise God. There was something beautiful about their countenance. It's unexplainable. All you know was holiness. Holiness was just so beautiful. They didn't have the best of clothes, but they were beautiful men and women. They just illuminated with the power of God. Their revelation knowledge was without a doubt superlative. They never made a mistake on what God said and what God would have you to do. They had power with God. No wonder Jesus, four days before he's about to die, walks in riding riding on a donkey a coat of a jackass into the city of Jerusalem Matthew records that great triumphant ride a king on a humanly beast a beast of low caliber and stubbornness 
a beast of rebellion, the cult of an ass that had never been ridden before. But the king stabilizes the beast, triumphantly riding on rebellion, riding on everything that would rebel against the power of God. Jesus sits down on the coat, and the coat doesn't buck, doesn't win. But he holds fast to the control of the master. Jesus is trying to show all of Jerusalem. I am the one that can control your rebellious nature. So calm your rebellious mind. I'm the one that can control your out of control emotions. Triumphantly the king rides into the city of Jerusalem. Four days before he his death sets down off the beast. They're crying out in the streets, Hold Santa. They can see the replication. They can see the symbolism. They can see the power. The children begin to scream out. The women begin to holler out. This coat has never been written, but the Robona, the master, has come in on an active coat like the writing of Isaiah, and he shall come riding triumphantly, your king, on an active coat. Jesus rides to the city. Palms hit the ground. They cast their garments down before him. Triumphantly, his ride is a ride of victory over every high imagination, every vain imagination, every idol of humanity. He's riding on rebellion, riding on waywardness, riding on self will self sinnedness sickness and disease. Saying, I'm king of kings and lord of lords. Look at him ride, and when they catch the picture, they begin to sing in the streets. Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna to the son of Abraham. What these cheering talking about? Out come the high priests, the scribes, and the Pharisees. That praise is only to Jehovah God. Hosanna means God save us. We pray save us. You got the power. Save us. You're the one that will tell my rebellion. Save us. We need your help right now. Hosanna to the Son of David. Save us, Jesus. From our rebellious mind, from our crooked nature, from our crooked attitude, from our low thinking, Jesus has it together. He comes off the beast, stops at the timber, ready to worship God. Hallelujah. Look at the love for God in him. Walks up to the temple and in the gates. The outer courts of the Gentiles. Jesus is ready to go in. He's the male child. So he's got to have his half shekel of silver. I'm sure he placed it in the box. I'm sure he did just like the law said. Now he has to enter the Gentile courts. Even though he's God's high priest. But he's not of the ironic priesthood. And he's not of the Leviticus priesthood. He's not a Levite by birth. And he's not a son of Aaron. Because the Bible says he shall be a priest after the order of Melchizedek. He's got to come through the Gentile gate. That's the lowest gate. That's the extreme outside gate. That's the gate of the burglary. That's the gate of the heathen. That's the gate of the stranger. That's the gate where you and I would come in. But thank God Jesus came through the gate. When he came there, 
It was to be a place where they used to worship, where they'd get together and prepare themselves to go in. It was a place where the stranger would talk to a Jew and the Jew would proselyte him and tell him, our God, be the God that brought us out of Israel. He brought us out of Egypt with a mighty outstretched hand. It was there in the outer court. They would witness to one another and tell them, tell them, he is the God. He is the God that fought the sun at the battle of Jericho. He is the one that brought us through the Red Sea on dry. It was there preparing yourself in the Gentile court that they were prepared to move to the higher court. And the inner court there, they would prepare their money at the time of the voice of the priest so they could enter in before the brazen altar, before they could bring their sacrifice. They used to bring it with them. And those that were traveling from afar off used to bring the sacrifices with them. You will not find under the old covenant not one time did they ever have to buy an oxen or an ass or a lamb or a turtle dove in the end term of the gates. You will not find that in the Old Testament. But something strange and new has crept into the new church age. They start selling in the outer courts of God's sanctified house. This house was a house of prayer. And Jesus can't get to the temple because he's being hassled. He can't get his offering together because he's being hassled. He can't witness to his brother who has come from Tara, the upper coast of Samaria, from Babylon and Egypt, to tell them that there is a God above the God Baal and Ray, higher than the Athenians' God, higher than Asterisk, but they just want to. They want to sell. They want to do what they want to do in God's house. Jesus is being eaten up with the love of God's will and with the power of his God until he's restless. He's getting finicky in God's house. He hears the doves whistling in the gates, coming and flickering their wings at the feet of the custom of the women while they're saying two for a dollar, two for a dollar, two for a dollar. He's trying to prepare himself to go before God. I got four days to live and I want to be a perfect sacrifice. But I can't get to God because these are in my way. You can have this new 20 shekels of silver, 20 shekels of silver over here, sir. 15 shekels of silver over here, ma'am. A lamb for 30 shekels. I got a better price, 25 shekels for a ram. Yes, sir. God is being eaten up. Jesus sees I could be kneeling here. I'm supposed to be praying here. I'm supposed to be getting ready to go into the temple. But I couldn't get in because there's too much mess in God's house. I'm trying to get through to God, but I can't get through for the mess I see, for the mess I hear. What's wrong? What's happened to these people? What's wrong with them? This is God's house, and His house shall be called a house of prayer. I can see Jesus trying to pray, but you can't get a prayer through when there's a whole lot of mess going on in God's house. You can't get a prayer through when there's a whole lot of foolishness in God's house. 
everybody's talking, but they're talking about the wrong thing. The outer courts were where you were to talk about Jesus, where you were supposed to talk about the Father God, how he created us to worship him. But Jesus can't get through. All of a sudden, Jesus rises up in the spirit. He can't take no more. And like a wild man, filled up with the love of God. How many times have you needed to get to the altar and foolishness is going on in God's house? How many times have you knelt down in these holy seats? Somebody screaming across the room. I'll see you tonight. I'm going over McDonald's. Meet me in the parking lot. You're trying to pray through. The load is so heavy. You're trying to get through. You're trying to break through to God. And somebody said, Hey, when did you see May? Have you seen Maybell lately? I hear she's going with Jack, and the load is so heavy. You're saying, help me, Father. Help me, Father. Help me, Father. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, that's for us. In God's house, Jesus kicks over the money changers, kicks over the tables. The old captain says he took the money tables up tossed them in the air, threw the money all in the floor so they didn't know what belonged to who. Let the doves loose, took a whip and beat them out of God's house and said, my father's house is a house of prayer, but you have made it a hideaway for thieves. I'm trying to hide away with God and you made it a hideaway for thieves. You're here to steal my joy. You're here to vex my spirit. You're here to cut my anointing. You're here to block my progress. But I cast you out. I cast you out. I cast you out. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. God's house. Holy ground. God's house. Sanctified ground, God's house, a house of prayer, God's house, a place of deliverance. You ought to get healed here. You ought to break through here. You ought to get anointed here. You ought to be set free here. You need to get the Holy Ghost here. But when mess is in the way, Oh, yeah. When mess is in the way, we got people trying to get through, trying to get through, begging God for the Holy Ghost. The folk in the outer courts cutting the food because they've forgotten this is God's house. No reverence, no fear. Then the disciples looked at him and remembered as they rode. He burned with the zeal of God's house. Yes, kicking over everything. Honey, there comes a time when you love God and you can see what the enemy's trying to do. Block folks from getting to God. It's time to turn over. Kick folk out. Run them out. Say, this is God's house and it shall be a house of prayer. But when we become companion to their thievery, to their low life and their low living. We make it a den of thieves. And we start pointing the finger, well you can't tell on me, cause I know what you into. You gotta clean God's house up. Either you gonna live holy, or you gonna wish you had her. Cause this is God's house. Yes, and you gonna make it a hideaway for thieves. Well, you can't mess with me honey, cause I, I heard where you was last night. Uh-huh, you make it a den of thieves. You don't laugh at sin. You deal with it. You don't companion with sin. You deal with it. And say, this is God's house. 
The blind were walking around. The lame were walking around. The sick were walking around. Nobody was getting healed. Read the scripture. It said after Jesus cleaned out the house, then he went to healing the blinded eyes. He when the lame start walking, the dumb start talking, the blind start seeing. Why? Because the house was clean. You haven't problems in your own temper because you won't let God get in there and clean house. You're sick in your own temper because you won't let God get in there and clean your house. Know ye not that ye are the temples of the living God? A lot of us have problems because we're not willing to deal with the truth. We'll hang around truth, but we don't deal truth. Don't want to take the truth. Don't want to live the truth. So we have to go through all these problems. But look what happened. As soon as he cleaned out the house, the Bible said the children start crying out, Hosanna! So glad somebody stood up. So glad somebody cleaned out the mess. So glad! The blind start seeing. The lame start walking. No problem about gifts. We've been having gifts. We just have to clean up our filthy lives. Clean up our temples. See, God start moving. God start moving. No, this is not a message. But for anybody but for us. Come on, let's just close our eyes and worship God. Hallelujah. 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 He let it among the dear Mama Kara. Hallelujah, let it among the Moshia. Hallelujah. He tell it among the Namaya. We love you, we love you, we love you, we love you. We worship you. Yeah, 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 the Mama Mokura. Hallelujah, we worship you, Jesus. Ah! Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you, we praise you, we praise you. We magnify your name, we magnify you. We love you, Lord. We thank you. We glorify you. We lift you up. We exalt you. We extol you. We esteem you. Higher than any other God. Oh, sha ha ha ha. Glory. Ha 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 ha. Higher. Do you know the Oh, ha. Glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We worship you. We praise you right now, Lord. We thank you for your house. We thank you for your house. This is the place we come to pray. We come to get in touch with you. We come to love you. We come to worship you. We, we come to get a word from you. We come for direction. We come for teaching. We come for life. We come for healing. We come for deliverance. It's your house. Oh, da -da -da -ba 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 it's your house. Glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. We put down our foolishness. We put down our foolish way, our foolish talk, our foolish actions, our rebellion. Yes, Lord. Oh, glory, glory. We worship you right now. We will obey you. We'll obey your word. Lord, we don't want to be anybody's stumbling block. We will obey you. It's God's house. And it shall be called a house. A prayer for all nations. Why don't we just raise our hands right now. And and you just close your eyes and ask God to clean your temple hey ask God to step in and cleanse the temple ask him to step in your life and wash you and cleanse you by the washing of the word let him wash you Cleanse your mind, cleanse your conversation, clean your heart, and create in you a clean heart, and renew a right spirit in you. Hey, Shabbatiah, hallelujah, yes, open your mouth and tell him, cleanse my temple, Lord. Come on in, Jesus, just go in, Bababoya, hallelujah. Anything you find that's not right, take it out. Hey, glory, glory. Take it out, Lord. Take it out. You tell her the bone of the mamaya. Take it out, Lord. 
I want you to use me. Woo, glory. Hey, I want to be used by you. I want to be used by you. Glory, glory. I quit my way. I quit my way. Clean me up, Lord. Use me. Use me. Use me. Heart of the bone of the Mashiach. Ask him to turn the zeal on. Ask him to turn that love on. Ask him to turn the love on. Turn the love for me on you. Let your love, let your love just overshadow, Lord. Overshadow. Let our hearts burn with your love. Burn with your love. Burn with your love. Burn with your love, Lord. Stir our minds. Stir our hearts. Stir our spirit. Stir our minds. Stir our hearts. Stir our spirits. Stir our minds. Stir our hearts. Stir our spirits. Lay out of the high out of the Moria. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That's right. You get in touch with him. You talk with him. You let God minister to you. That's right. Raise your hands and worship him. Worship him. Now you worship him in your own way. You worship him how you want to. You. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. You worship him. That's right. You do it. That's right. You worship him in your own way. Yes. Yes. Let the Holy Ghost minister to you. That's right. Let him, let him, let him, let him. Yes. When's the last time you praised him? When's the last time you worshipped him? It shouldn't be foreign. It shouldn't be that far away from you. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Honey, let loose and let God have his way. Let him have his way in your life. That's it. That's it. Let God have his way in your life. Worship him, honey. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. If you've been worshiping right now, he can anoint you. He can touch you. He can feel you again. He can fill you up. Oh, help us, Lord. Help us. Ha ha. Help us. Help our temples, Lord. Cleanse our temples. Make us a praise. Make us a praise. Make us a praise. Make us a praise. Uh-huh. Break through, honey. Get your mind on Jesus. Get your mind off that neighbor. Get your mind on Jesus. Get your mind on Jesus. That's what you come to church for. Get your mind on Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 That's right, that's right. Talk to him. Open your mouth and talk to him. When's the last time you talked to him? Uh-huh. Help, Lord. Help, help, Lord. Help us, Jesus. Help us. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. Let him help you. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, oh, praise him, child, praise him, worship him. While you're worshiping, he can run over and heal somebody. While you're worshiping God, he can run over and tell somebody what they need to do. Get your mind on God, get your mind on God. He's the center of your attraction, the center of your attention. It's Jesus, it's Jesus, it's Jesus. Nobody counts like Jesus. It's Jesus, it's Jesus, it's Jesus. Uh-huh. Oh, God help us. Yes, we praise you. We bless your name, Lord. We magnify your name. We glorify you. Mm. Jesus. Jesus. Mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord. Help us. Help us. Help us. Help us. Help us, Jesus. Jesus.
It's God's house. It's God's house. It's God's house. It's God's house. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Amen. Amen. Can we say amen? I tell you sometimes we feel like it's entertainment, but it's not. It's God. It's God. And uh, just not going to let you do anything you want to do in God's house. God is a good God, isn't he? Reach over and tell somebody he's good. And tell them, listen, I'm not going to let you do anything you want to in God's house. Uh-huh, tell them again. And this time, make them know you mean business. Uh-huh. Oh, yes, it's God's house. And I remember a couple months ago when we were fasting and, and God started talking to our hearts about the community of the saints, the community of the believers. And we were talking about revivals, and you know how we do. Most of us that are evangelists on the field, in January, a lot of us do our fasting then because we want direction for the furtherance of the year. It's a time when we can take off and, and, and just stay before the Lord, and, and uh, we may not be able to spend as much time in fasting and in prayer. So most of us don't do anything in January but prayer and fasting. We usually just take the whole month off. I remember God talking to a lot of us when we got together here and there and start witnessing how God had blessed us and this, that, and the other. We were concerned about the attitudes of the house of God. And, and the Lord had shared with mostly all of us the same thing. And I like how he confirms his word. And he would say, well, half the time, y'all have church and y'all never invite me to come. We just automatically think he's going to be here. We just say, well, this is the church house and he's just going to be here. Not so. Baby, he'll let you open up his doors, sit down in his chair, and tell you, turn the lights when you go. I'm gone. Honey, you got to learn how to invite him in. Come on in, Jesus. This is your house. You come on in and have your way. As a result, many of us start inviting the Lord in through worship. That's why you see it ain't no phase. It's just something God said, tell him, worship me. Yeah, Lord, we want you here. Come on down. Touch us and heal us, deliver us, whatever you got to do. Help us, Lord. It's because God wants to know that you want him in. I want you to take charge of my life. I want you to heal. I want you to deliver. And when you invite God in, you have that spirit of expectation. People know it. God knows it. I know it. I can tell by looking at you. You had a hard day, but still if you love the Lord and you still want him to move. Yeah. Or if you had a hard day and said, boy, why don't they let me go home? They don't know how to have church. Just why do you got to take so long to do everything? We can tell all of that. Y'all know we ain't crazy. You know that. We know each other. Now don't we? Amen. But invite him in. He loves you. And, and create a love about God's house and about the things of God and the people of God and about your atmosphere and your surroundings. Have a zeal for God. And live like you know God is living in your temple. And then we're going to see God do some things in this last decade that we have been yearning in prayer to see happen massively. We get sprinkles of it. Oh, when is the last time you seen like they used to do in church? It used to hit way over here. I know you remember this, Sister Fitzpatrick. The Holy Spirit used to say, boom, hit on this side and just run. Whoa, 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 all the way over across the church. Now, I mean, for real, how many of y'all used to remember them days? God started on one side of the church and cleaned up. By the time he hit here, it was just an explosion. Boom, everybody was up. Out, crying, screaming, shouting, dancing, twisting, turning. Don't get too sedity, baby. You in our way. You in our way. You in our way. You're in our way. God is good to us. 
And, and God wants us to continue liking his goodness, but don't put him out. After he done bought you everything and then pack his bags and put him out. This is his house. It's his house. We ought to treat him as the Lord of the house. How you want me to do it, Jesus? How you want it designed? How you want the floors clean? Now what song you want me to sing to you? You have to come in lullabying, Jesus. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, 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 I love you. You ought to just sing to him, talk to him. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Love you, Jesus. You're wonderful. You, you ought to talk. This is his house. He talked to everybody but him. God is good. I just hope you can understand the, the pulse of Jesus and understand well, how he feels right now. And I hope that if you do understand, then you'll turn on, on to Jesus. Just turn it on. Turn it on to Jesus. Give him back the love that you have for him. Is that all right? This is the altar call. And this is for those that have fallen away from the Lord. And you've walked away or you got tripped up somewhere. And you've stumbled over somebody or stumbled because of your own lust. Whatever. But you have a desire to come back to God. You can get up from your seat right now and come home. And we'd be glad to have you home. We're waiting for you to come back. And then for those that need the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, it is necessary that you be filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in an other tongue as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. And for those of you that have never received water or spirit baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus, pour salvation, it's necessary that you come right now. And receive Jesus as Lord and Savior and Master and the liver of your life. Why don't you come right now? Why don't you give up, give up, give up to Jesus? Oh, He's the only, oh, one who saved you. You know there's joy in following Jesus. For he's the only one true lover of my son. Why don't you give up, give up, give up to Jesus? Oh, he's the only one, one who said. Why don't you get up now? Come on, saints, sing that. God bless you for your reverence to God. Come on. Somebody needs Jesus. Give up and come to the Lord. Give up, give up. Come on. Come on, young lady. Young man, Jesus wants your attention. Get up. You need your temple cleansed. You need Jesus to come in and straighten out your life and get it all together again. Get up and come. Get up and come. While the saints are singing, oh, why don't you give?